A race start is really only comprised of three things. You need to be on the line with speed and at the right end. If you can get those three things right, you really don't need to do anything else. So what we're going to do now is run through each of those three things one by one. So the first component of a good start is just being on the line. Now this is a pretty easy skill to to do, but it's one I frequently see sailors get wrong. So my first bit of my first tip, as it were, would be to imagine a box before the start line maybe going 10 meters back and think of that like a sheep pen so within the last five minutes before the start you're not allowed to tell outside the box and what ingraining this um, invisible box into your head will do will just uh, mean you, however bad your start is you'll never be too far away but you really need a more precise way of knowing when you're on the start line and for this we use something called a, a transit and we basically get a transit by sailing along the line with our bow pointing towards one end and the tiller running towards the other end of the start line and we sail along the line and look along the center line of our boat and line that up with one end of the line and extend that line uh, onto a point onto usually a point on the shore uh, such as a tree or a building of some sort so that thing of note such as the tree or the building will be your transit so when you're approaching the line from below you'll see the two points start to converge the tree and the boy at one end of the line and once the two points have converged again you'll know at that point you are on the on the line there's also an exercise you can try which will help you get better at judging how far off the line you are so all you need for this exercise, you can do this on land, just find a open space like a field, uh, a playing grounds and take three jumpers. So you go into the field, you drop one of the jumpers, then you walk a start line away from that jumper and drop the other one. And now you've got your start line uh, marked by the two jumpers and you've still got one jumper in your hand and you walk behind the line uh, as if you were approaching the start line on on starboard or whatever and as you approach the line it's your job to judge when you are one boat length off the line and you drop the jumper there and then you go to one end of the line sight along the line and you'll be able to see how far your jumper was off the line, whether it was really one boat length or whether you were too far away. The second component to a good start is acceleration. So you not only want to be on the line when the gun goes, you want to be going pretty fast at that time, otherwise the boats either side of you are going to shoot off and leave you in dirty air. So to do this, you're going to need to get your time or distance right you're going to have to work out how long it takes you to accelerate and how many boat lengths you need to get from just moving to almost full speed so if you next time you're out of the water i recommend spending some time working out how long how many seconds does it take to get from just moving to almost full speed and and how many boat lengths roughly does that take and this will just give you a good idea of when you need to start that acceleration before the start so say it takes us 10 seconds and three boat lengths to accelerate from just moving to almost full speed so that just gives us an idea of when we need to start accelerating that 
means in that case we would have to start accelerating 10 seconds before the gun goes and three boat lengths back. Now the race watch is a really essential piece of equipment that we need to judge our acceleration properly and I even have two uh, so I have one on my buoyancies and I have one near the front of the boat just in case I lose one, lose it, I lose the time on one of them. At least I've got a backup there. Um, I don't recommend everyone does this, but you certainly need uh, one race watch and remember to take it out with you. If the worst comes to the worst and you do happen to lose the time, the next best thing is just to track forward with the other boat. So as the other boats approach the start line, you just stick close to them and maybe a little bit slightly ahead of them and you should be able to get an okay start like that. The third element to a good start is line bias. And what we mean by this is basically whether one end of a line is better than the other. There are three factors that can influence this. They are whether one side of a course is favoured over the other, what the wind direction is, and other boats. So before we go into this, I just want to make sure you're all clear on a few terms. So a square line is where each end of the line is equally as far away from the next mark. The starboard end, or committee boat end, is what we call the right-hand side of the line as you look up wind. And the port end, or pin end, is what we call the left-hand side of the course as you look up wind. So if the line is square, there are no other boats, no one side of a course is biased over the other, and the next mark is set correctly, then it doesn't matter which end you start. But this is hardly ever the case. So there's almost always some line bias there. So the first factor we need to consider is whether one side of a course is favoured over another. So there are several things that could make one side of a course better than the other. They are whether there's stronger breeze on one side, maybe favourable tide, uh, a wind bend, less chop, or a persistent shifters forecast perhaps. So if we have a game feature on one side, in this case it's on the port side of the course, we're going to want to be at the end of the line that's closest to that game feature. So in this case we're going to want to be on the port end of the line. So the end that's biased is the end that's closest to the favoured side of the course. So we need a way to find which end of the line the wind direction favours when we're out on the water. Now there are several ways we can do this, but we only really need one. Now the most straightforward way to do this is to sail just behind the line and point the boat head to wind with the sails flogging over the middle and then look to see which end of the line the bow is pointing closer to. In the left diagram the boat points into the wind and we can see the boat is pointing more towards the starboard end which means it's starboard end bias. Another way to think about this is to imagine which end of the line has the smaller angle. So in this case if we point the boat head to wind we can see that there is a smaller angle on the starboard end of the line, the 70 degrees. So that signifies we should start at the starboard end in this wind direction. The second diagram gives an example of a 10 degree port end bias. Again we see when pointed head to wind the boat points us to the favoured end, which in this case is the port end. Now to end this section on line bias, I thought it would be helpful to just go through a short little quiz with you. So in this scenario, the line is square to the wind, each end is equally as far into the wind, but the race officer has laid the mark, the first mark, uh, slightly to the left of the wind. Now, 
in this scenario, have a think about which end of the line you think is favoured. Um, you can get a little notepad um, and a pencil, or you can just play along in your head. But make a note of what end you think is favoured. Is it A, the starboard end, B, the port end, or C, it doesn't matter. So the answer is actually C. Now, obviously, if we were swimming from one end of the line to the first mark, it would be quicker to start on the pin end. But we're not swimming, we're sailing. And all that matters is which end of the line is further upwind. And in this case, neither of them are. So there is no bias. So to demonstrate that, let's just have a quick look at the two boats' paths to the mark. So we see that they're both sailing an equal distance. So second and last question, who says A, the starboard end is favoured? B, the port end? Or C, it doesn't matter? So actually in this case, the pen end is favoured because it is closer to the wind, it's further upwind. The second factor that influences line bias is wind direction. So a good way to get your head around this is to imagine ladder rungs drawn perpendicular to the wind direction, like in the diagram. Think of the aim of racing as which boat can cross all the ladder rungs first. If there is no bias, then the ladder rungs will lie directly across the start line. So whichever side you start, you'll be equally as far upwind. But if the wind shifts, this happens. In this case, the wind has shifted left. The ladder rungs of the course shift with the wind. And we now see the pin end boat is two and a half ladder rungs ahead of the starboard end boat, giving it a two and a half wrong lead from the get-go. The shift effectively means the pin and boat doesn't have as far to sail. Let's have a look at their paths to the mark. In this example we see the pin and boat is able to make the mark a lot quicker than the starboard end boat. The third element influencing line bias is other boats. So say for example the starboard end of the line is further upwind and therefore favoured. Do we start that end? Not necessarily. If your competitors are any good, they'll have worked this out, making the starboard end pretty crowded. If there are many boats fighting for limited places on the front row of the starboard end, it's inevitable some are going to lose out. And being in dirty air, controlled by the fleet, is never fast. So it's possible you'd get a better start by starting at the less crowded end. This is something you'll have to weigh up against the significance of the other factors that influence line bias. If you're sailing against beginners, then you'll probably be able to create a, a nice gap for yourself in the crowd and still make a good start. Whereas if you were put into an Olympic fleet, you'd have a very slim chance of getting off to a good start. So it's important to assess your ability comparative to others in the fleet. You will often find that you'll do better by starting at the less crowded end. The best way for you to improve your ability to spot line bias is to get into the habit of selecting an end of the start line you think is best on every start you do. You may not get it right every time, but over time, you'll get better at it. Those are the three elements of a good start. So hopefully starting doesn't seem quite so complicated now. Just take away what you've learnt, put it into practice, and you should see your starts begin to improve.